Welcome back to Meet the Press, where you can join the conversation at any time on our Facebook page or by jumping on Twitter and using the hashtag MTP10. Well, if this year's election campaign left you feeling a bit tired and frustrated, spare a thought for the journalists who've lived and breathed Tony Abbott and Kevin Rudd for the last five weeks. News Corp Australia's columnist Miranda Devine joins us now. And like our other panellists, Miranda, you've been quite critical, I guess, of the way that Kevin Rudd ran his campaign over the five weeks. Yeah, look, because um, it was in such stark contrast to the way Tony Abbott's campaign ran, and I think all the journalists who were on travelling, alternating between the two campaigns felt the same way. There was just this sort of um, shambolic nature of the Rudd campaign with uh, nothing sort of planned from day to day and these sort of thought bubble announcements and getting out of bed at three o'clock in the morning to race up to, you know, the top end to make some announcement that then disappeared. Um, and whereas on the Abbott campaign, Campaign. It was very tightly controlled um, and it, the, the candidate himself was very disciplined and so you'd have, um, he, would, he would speak briefly and it, he was always on message which got very boring because you'd heard it a thousand times but obviously that was a much more effective way of behaving. One of the things that characterised Kevin Rudd's campaign though was, was that there was none of the destabilisation that Julie Gillard suffered in 2010. Mm. Do you agree with that as somebody who was embedded with the Rudd campaign for Well, for no, I wasn't time. embedded with the Rudd campaign, but yes, no, absolutely. I mean, they, um, I mean the destabilisation for Gillard came from him. Um, there was no one outside destabilising Rudd's campaign except himself destabilising it because he was, you know, a rogue trader, effectively. Miranda, in terms of the time that you spent with Tony Abbott, um, can you tell us a little about a day in the life of Tony Abbott, uh, how, he, how he sort of runs his campaign day? Yeah, well... It's a long day. It's a, it's a really long day, but he, you know, he's, he's, his bodyguards adore him because he's just a routine man. That's mm. the way they, they describe him because he's up you know, at five, he's, he hits the gym if he's in the hotel um, and often his bodyguards are there with him. You know, he's back in his room to take calls at 6am. He's just, uh, they, can, you know, they can rely on his schedule and I think that was where he's always pretty much punctual. Um, and that was a, another stark contrast with Rudd, who was, I think, the, the hallmark of his campaign was that he was chronically late. And, you know, there were a couple of quite, you know, it's one thing to keep journalists waiting for hours, but there were, I guess, three moments in the campaign that really hit with his chronic lateness. And that was, um, he kept uh, some Aborigines up in Arnhem Land waiting for about three hours one time. Um, he kept soldiers in Townsville who were in full kit in the heat, you know, hot sun waiting for almost two hours. Um, and then there was that famous press conference the Friday before the election where, you know, a girl fainted. People was, were waiting for almost an hour in this stuffy hot room. So that was, um, I think, you know, went to his character. What about Margie Abbott and the girls? Uh, what sort of impact do you think they've had on the campaign? Look, I, I think they were crucial to Tony Abbott softening his image and um, countering that misogynist claim that, that Gillard used so effectively, I guess. Um, and, uh, and, you know, they're terribly photogenic and um, Margie especially, I think, came out as the star of this campaign. Really articulate Margie. I think she's going to be a really interesting first lady, passionate about early childhood education. I agree and I think, um, I think it'll be interesting to see um, the first working wife in the, um, in the lodge. Well, Miranda, we might let you go now to catch up on some much-deserved rest. Thank you very much for your insights today. And thank you to our panel, Steve Lewis, Samantha Maiden and Hugh Rimmington. Well, coming up on Meet the Press, what an Abbott government means for your finances.